Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Acid Base Reactions. Uh, this is the penultimate video number 24 in this module and we're just going to spend this one and the next one talking a little bit about buffer solutions. The specific learning outcome that is linked to this video is about conducting practical investigations to prepare a buffer and demonstrate its properties. Now hopefully it's becoming fairly obvious to you that chemistry is a very practical course and this course is very much about applying your knowledge, not just collecting facts. Having said that, if we're going to prepare buffers, we need to know a little bit about what they are and some of the things that we need to look out for. So in this particular video, we're going to put a few things together just to see if we can understand what buffers are and how we can use them. And therefore, we can then put together a practical in class about buffer and just demonstrate how it acts as a buffer. So firstly, a couple of definitions. One from Chemistry in the Marketplace by Selinger and Barrow, and this is a great book. Um, a buffer is a chemical added to water to minimize a change in the pH if acids or bases are added. Um, uh, Bronwyn Hegarty's work, uh, her module on acid-base reactions also has a nice definition. It's a, it's a longer definition and I've just kind of trimmed out the key bits here for us to focus on. Buffer solution is an aqueous solution consisting of a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So here we have uh, a couple of definitions that give us a bit of an idea about what's going on with a buffer. We can use both our knowledge of conjugates and also an understanding of um, our uh, equilibrium constant in relation to the acid ionization to give us a little bit more of an understanding of what's going on here. So if, for example, we were to look at a, uh, a weak acid and its conjugate. So let me just pick something like uh, acetic acid. So here's acetic acid. Now we know that acetic acid in water will act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Um, and it will donate a proton to the water. So we'll get an H3O plus. And we'll also have the CH3 C double O minus acetate ion. So this is a standard. Here is our weak acid, and here is our conjugate uh, base. So we've identified both of these two things. But what we know is that because this is weak, there is an equilibrium that lies to the left here. So it favors the formation or at least the retention of the molecule, not the ion. So how do we make a buffer in the first place? Well, what we have to do is we have to add a common ion. So for example, if we added sodium acetate, then what we would do is increase the concentration of the acetate ion. Now, of course, we know that in equilibrium systems, there's going to be a shift to the left to try and re-establish the equilibrium. But if we add sufficient um, conjugate base to our solution, then we will effectively have equal concentrations. So let me just write this underneath of both our acid and our conjugate base. What we want is for these to be equal. Now, the thing that's really important when these two things are equal is that when we look at the Ka value, which is the concentration of, in this case, the H3O plus multiplied by the concentration of CH3 CO minus divided by the concentration of the CH3 CO H. When we look at this particular expression, we notice that if the concentration of the acid and the conjugate are the same, they will cancel out. And therefore our Ka value will effectively be tied directly to the concentration of hydrogen ions. And that's what we're after. We're actually after a particular type of buffer that has a value that's associated with that concentration of hydrogen ions. This means that there are different types of bases and the Hegarty definition makes it clear. There are different types of bases that uh, of conjugate um, acid or base combinations to form buffers that will have different pH values. So we can keep the buffer uh, at a low pH, at a neutral pH or at a higher pH, depending on which substance we use in combination with its conjugate. The most important thing for us therefore to do when we're looking at producing a buffer is to ensure that we have both the acid 
present and its conjugate base in the form of uh, a salt usually or vice versa if we're starting with um, the base. Diagrammatically, it looks a little bit like this. So you can see from the diagram that the concentrations of both the acid and the conjugate base are equal. And so therefore, just to reiterate that, when we look at the Ka value, uh, if I simplify that just down to the um, protons, the hydrogen ions, rather than writing them as hydroniums, because we know that the water is going to disappear anyway, um, then you can see maybe a little clearer on this slide than on the previous slide that the concentration of this and this are the same. So whatever those values are, they'll cancel out. So we have a direct relationship between the Ka value and the um, H plus value. And so therefore the pKa um, is a nice relevant one for us to talk about when we're looking at buffer solutions. But what's the purpose? What's the point of this? The point of this is if we add um, an acid, so if we add a source of H plus ions, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the concentration of the H plus ions. And Le Chatelier's principle says that the system will shift to counter that to try and push us back in the opposite direction. And so therefore, um, we will have a shift in the equilibrium, in this case, to the left to um, uh, increase the concentration of the uh, reactants. Likewise, if we were to add a base, add a source of hydroxide ions, what these are going to do is they're going to um, neutralize the protons, neutralize the hydronium ions, drop the concentration of those. Therefore, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, by Le Chatelier's principle, shift that equilibrium, which is actually going to shift it this time to the right. Decrease the um, acid concentration and increase the um, concentration of the products, the H plus and the C. H3 C double O minus. Now this type of situation buffers work for small changes in pH over a, over a reasonable range, but not too much. If you start pouring too much sulfuric acid into your swimming pool, you will badly affect the pH and you won't be able to recover it just with the use of a buffer. So buffer solutions allow us to have some um, resistance to changes in pH over a small range, and they're a very useful thing um, in a number of important natural systems. And we'll look at those natural systems in the final video. Um, thank you for watching.